report about using a leukemia patient's own bone marrow as a source to help create stem cells to cure the disease. It's been the holy grail of cancer biology. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Let's talk about cancer. We know it's a terrible disease. It is also a genetic disease caused by genetic mutations, small changes in the genome of a cell that trigger uncontrolled growth and reproduction. Leukemia is cancer of the blood, a kind of liquid tumor. Leukemia is, in fact, a dozen or so different blood cancers, depending on which type of blood cell is affected. Or at least, that's what doctors have thought for some time. Leukemia traditionally has been diagnosed by looking at blood samples. This is your blood normally. And this is your blood on leukemia, or I should say, with leukemia. In the past, to a large extent, doctors have based their diagnosis of leukemia and, more importantly, the treatment of leukemia on what they saw in the blood sample. More elaborate tests now exist, but seeing has been believing when it comes to leukemia. Todd Gollop works for both the Whitehead Genome Center and the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston. The link between genome and cancer is key. Each cancer, each leukemia, has a distinct genetic fingerprint. And he thinks that the key to a conclusive diagnosis and targeted cures lies in the genetic diagnosis of leukemia. At the moment, when patients are diagnosed with leukemia or other type of cancer for that matter, we generally give them what we think to be the best treatment for their cancer, and we hope for the best, knowing, in fact, that they may or may not respond to therapy. And I'm very convinced that the more we can understand the molecular genetic basis of each individual patient's cancer, the better we can decide which therapy they should receive. So then the future will no longer be a guess as to whether treatment will work. We'll simply know the answer before we even start therapy. Leukemia comes in a variety of acronyms like CML and ALL, CML stands for chronic myeloid leukemia, a common adult form with 5,000 new cases in the U.S. every year. ALL stands for acute lymphocytic leukemia. About 2,000 children get ALL every year. The good news is the cure rates for ALL with chemotherapy have been running between 80 and 90 percent, but some young patients have not responded to the treatment. It took genetic analysis to realize they had another kind of leukemia, not ALL, but AML, or acute myeloid leukemia. About 8,000 new cases are diagnosed in the U.S. each year. What we're looking at here is the raw data derived from a DNA microarray of a patient with ALL, shown on the left, and a patient with AML, shown on the right. As you can see, the genetic patterns in ALL versus AML look largely the same, and one could not by eye identify any genetic differences between them. But if we use the computer to reorganize the same data uh, as shown here, you can see that there's a dramatic difference between ALL and AML. Here's a large group of genes shown in red that are activated or turned on in the ALL patients, but are turned off in all of the AML patients as shown in blue. As one researcher said, cancer isn't a one-trick pony. In some cases, dozens of mutations may conspire to turn on a cancer. It's important to know as many of them as possible. DNA chips, which are able to screen thousands of genes at a time, can show researchers the full range of genetic changes and mutations associated with leukemias and other cancers. The better you know your enemy, the better your chances of defeating him. Screen six or 7,000 genes instead of just a few, and you get a detailed fingerprint. I fundamentally believe that we will be able to identify genetic lesions in uh, many, many different cancers, certainly many different leukemias. That work is already underway. And that over time, we'll pick off one after another of these diseases. 
The first leukemia to be picked off by genetic medicine was CML, or chronic myeloid leukemia. Researchers identified the gene mutation responsible for the cancer, and the drug company Novartis made a drug to inhibit the gene, called Gleevec. It causes remission in 95% of chronic myeloid leukemias. It's long been the holy grail of cancer biology that we would develop targeted magic bullets, magic bullets which would seek out and destroy the specific lesion in the cancer cell and leave the normal cells untouched. The drug Gleevec achieves that end for chronic myeloid leukemia. But Daly and other researchers admit that of the dozen major types of leukemia, there are good treatments for maybe two, for CML and childhood ALL. For other types of leukemia, available treatments are totally inadequate. Meanwhile, geneticists and drug companies look for more gene targets that could lead to the development of so-called silver bullet drugs. Such future developments would be exciting news for many leukemia patients. The only recourse now is a bone marrow transplant, a harrowing experience for both donor and recipient. This involves using very, very high doses of chemotherapy and radiation to wipe out all of the blood-forming system in a patient, therefore also wiping out the leukemia cells, and then restoring normal blood formation with a bone marrow transplant, ideally from a tissue-matched sibling, brother or sister. When we're lacking matches among the immediate family, we can look to international registries where millions of people have donated their blood in anticipation that they might be a chance match for someone in need of a bone marrow transplant for leukemia. Only a minority of patients, one in four, are successful in finding a bone marrow match. If the match isn't perfect, there is a high risk of rejection. Here's why. If the donor's immune fighting cells identify the patient's body as foreign, they will attack. The result can be fatal. Also, the graft can fail when the patient's own body does the rejecting of the transplanted marrow. Like so many other researchers outside of the cancer field, George Daly is trying to use embryonic stem cells to generate universal cells for bone marrow transplantation, a match for every patient, every time. If you were a leukemia patient, I would take a skin biopsy, create a customized embryonic stem cell line. That is, that stem cell line would carry your genetic material and be matched identically to you. Then in the Petri dish, we would differentiate those embryonic stem cells into blood stem cells and then give you the equivalent of a blood stem cell or bone marrow transplant. But instead of using a donor's tissue, we'd be in effect using your own cells to cure your disease. Using the patient's own cells would eliminate the problem of rejection, decrease the toxicity of the transplant procedure, and, Daly is convinced, save more leukemia patients. Daly and Whitehead colleague Rudolf Yenish have proved that the technique can work in mice. The application in human leukemia patients is probably five to ten years away, and Daly is hoping for success. Treating leukemia patients is emotionally very challenging especially if we're taking kids uh, through a very toxic course of chemotherapy or through the very dangerous and challenging therapy of bone marrow transplantation. But it's also enormously satisfying because in many ways it's an all or nothing attempt. It's an all or nothing battle. And the ultimate success is taking those patients and those kids through the therapy and having a cure at the end. Genetics and genomics have expanded the arsenal of anti-leukemia weapons. DNA chips, silver bullet drugs, embryonic stem cells are all in development. The future is promising. The present is still dangerous, but leukemia is slowly giving ground. That's life. I'm Lucky Severson. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, 
Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the Series Advisory Board, consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.